Imagine you have 2,000 subdomains in front of you. Testing everything is impossible. So today, I'll show you how AI helps me decide where to test first without hacking anything. This is episode three of our AI-powered Ethical Hacking Mastery 2026 series. Today's topic is subdomains, tech stack, and target priority. Educational content only, no illegal activity, practice on legal targets. First, we will check and understand everything manually. Then we will review it again using AI. If you know how to do it manually, using AI will become much easier. And if the AI makes any mistakes, you will be able to identify and correct them. What is subdomain? Subdomain is a smaller part of a main website. You can think of it as a separate doorway of the same site. For example, if the main website is example.com, then blog.example.com, or admin.example.com are subdomains. These subdomains are usually created for different purposes. One might host a blog, another could be a login or admin panel, and another might run an API service. To explain it simply, if the entire website is a house, then subdomains are the different rooms inside that house. In cybersecurity, subdomains are extremely important because even if the main website is secure, a single subdomain might still contain a weakness. That's why ethical hackers always start by discovering and analyzing subdomains first. Subdomain discovery. Subdomain discovery is the process of finding all subdomains that exist under a main website. In other words, it helps identify every separate entry point that belongs to a single domain. Subdomain discovery can also be done using Google dorks. For example, site colon target url.com dash in url colon www. This is a Google search operator commonly used to identify subdomains. Simply put, this search tells Google, show me all pages that belong to the target url.com domain, but exclude any URLs that contain www. As a result, Google may reveal blog subdomains, admin panels, API endpoints, or other hidden services that are not part of the main website. This method is completely passive and it relies only on publicly indexed information. Subdomain discovery using census. Search.census.io census is a specialized search engine that shows public scan data of servers and websites available on the internet. When it comes to subdomain discovery, census helps us find subdomains using SSL certificates and HTTP service data. In simple terms, Census does not create subdomains and it does not brute force anything. Instead, it collects information from live websites that are using HTTPS and SSL. Many SSL certificates contain multiple subdomains inside a field called Subject Alternative Name, or SAN. By analyzing this certificate data, Census can reveal multiple subdomains associated with a single domain. This makes Census a powerful passive reconnaissance tool based entirely on publicly available information. For example, if you search for a large company's domain in Census, you'll often see a huge amount of information. I demonstrated this using example.com. And as you can see, Census reveals a lot of data related to that domain. You can clearly notice that there are many hosts and multiple subdomains associated with it. Since this method does not require any testing permission, I'm using it only as a demonstration. Using this method, you can also see data related to large organizations like Google or Microsoft. Searchdens.netcraft.com Netcraft collects a wide range of information about websites, including hosting history, DNS data, SSL certificates, and server details. By analyzing this data, Netcraft can often reveal subdomains associated with a main domain. This makes Netcraft another powerful source for passive subdomain discovery, using only publicly available information. DNS Dumpster can also be used to find subdomains, and it's a very popular tool for passive reconnaissance. It gathers DNS-related information without directly interacting with the target systems, making it safe and non-intrusive. This tool is primarily a paid service, but for most basic reconnaissance needs, you can still get everything you need for free. It provides enough information to help you understand your target's infrastructure using only publicly available data. Pentesttools.com uh, is an online penetration testing platform that provides multiple security testing and reconnaissance tools in one place. Simply put, this platform is designed for beginner to intermediate ethical hackers who want to perform reconnaissance, scanning, and basic security testing 
without installing local tools. So what can you do with pentesttools.com? Subdomain discovery, DNS and IP information gathering, port scanning, web server, and SSL analysis, directory and file discovery, basic vulnerability scanning, everything is web-based and can be done directly from your browser. Reconnaissance tools do not show every subdomain. They only reveal subdomains that are publicly available or previously known through public data sources. You might notice something interesting here. Using some tools, we only found seven or eight subdomains, but when we used Pentest tools, it showed more than 300 subdomains. So why does this happen? The reason is simple, different tools use different data sources and collection methods. Some tools rely only on limited public indexes, while others aggregate data from SSL certificates, DNS records, historical data sets, and multiple third-party sources. Pentest tools combine several of these sources, which is why it can reveal many more previously known subdomains. This doesn't mean the other tools are wrong. It just means they're looking at different pieces of the same puzzle. When we run the command, subfinder-dvonweb.com-all-silent, the subfinder tool searches for all publicly available subdomains associated with the domain vonweb.com. Subfinder does not access the website directly, and it does not perform any hacking or intrusive actions. Instead, it collects information from public sources such as SSL certificate, transparency logs, DNS records, and other open databases. Using this data, Subfinder generates a list of known subdomains that already exist on the internet. This makes Subfinder a passive reconnaissance tool focused purely on data collection and analysis. Subfinder-dvonweb.com-osubs.txt. This command saves all the found subdomains of the vonweb.com domain to a file. Here, Subfinder first finds the subdomains related to vonweb.com from various public sources, then writes them directly to a text file. For bug hunting and reconnaissance, this command is one of the most effective. Subfinder d target domain all silent o file name txt. This command collects all publicly available subdomains from multiple open sources. It then saves the results into a text file. By storing subdomains in a file, we can later analyze them separately and search for bugs in a more organized and efficient way. I'll show you how to use this list to find vulnerable subdomains step by step. A mass tool can also be used to passively discover subdomains associated with a target domain and save the results into a text file. A mass is very powerful, but it usually takes a long time to complete its process. Asset finder dash dash subs only target domain greater than file name. This command uses the asset finder tool to discover only the subdomains associated with the target domain. The dash dash subs dash only option means it excludes the root domain and unnecessary URLs and returns a clean list of subdomains only. Asset Finder works very fast and pulls data from public sources, which makes it a good choice for initial reconnaissance. Sublister is a subdomain enumeration tool that discovers subdomains for a domain like example.com. It gathers information from multiple public search sources such as Google, Bing, Yahoo, Baidu, Netcraft, VirusTotal, DNS Dumpster, and more. Because it relies on publicly available data, Sublister is commonly used for learning reconnaissance, demos, and practice environments. When you run the command DNS enum target domain, the DNS enum tool attempts to collect all DNS related information associated with the vonweb.com domain. Along with subdomain discovery, it helps in understanding the DNS infrastructure of the target. During execution, DNS enum typically gathers various DNS records and sometimes checks whether a DNS zone transfer is possible. It can also use word lists to brute force subdomains, which is why DNS enum is considered an active reconnaissance tool. Simply put, this command tries to create a DNS map of the domain, showing which servers are used, where mail services are hosted, and what potential subdomains may exist. Command findomain tvonweb.com. The findomain tool searches for all subdomains associated with the vonweb.com domain. It collects this information from multiple public data sources, making it a fast and efficient option for passive subdomain discovery. Command nuclei l subdomain save list tags takeover. 
This command checks all subdomains listed in your subdomain save list to identify whether there is any possibility of a subdomain takeover. Nuclei is a vulnerability scanner and security automation tool. It primarily performs template-based scanning, meaning it uses predefined templates to detect potential security risks on websites or subdomains. During the scan, duplicate subdomains are automatically filtered out, and analysis is performed only on unique targets. If any vulnerability related to subdomain takeover is found, Nuclei will report and display the result clearly. Command subject, W subdomains.txt, T100, timeout 30, SSLVs, subject checks, a subdomain is pointing to a third-party service such as GitHub Pages, AWS S3, Heroku, Azure, Fastly, etc. source, but there is no active resource currently associated with that service. In other words, Subject identifies dangling DNS records that may lead to a potential subdomain takeover vulnerability. SubZ run, target subfinder.txt. SubZ tool to search for subdomain takeover vulnerabilities. It checks whether a subdomain is pointing to a cloud or third-party service, but no active resource actually exists on that service. If such a case is found, there may be a risk of a subdomain takeover. If such a subdomain exists, it will be displayed like the example you can see now. Since I am showing this for learning purposes, I will not demonstrate it using any real or external website. However, following the same process will produce the same type of results. These are the standard steps used to identify subdomain takeover vulnerabilities. Now we'll see how we can perform these tasks using AI. To get high quality output from AI, you must give it clear and well-structured instructions. Only then can AI provide accurate and useful results. By using AI and giving it instructions according to your needs, the AI can automatically generate commands and present the results in a clear way. Here, I gave the AI a clear prompt to use sublist3r for passive subdomain enumeration on vonweb.com. The AI ran the tool using multiple search engines, collected a comprehensive list of subdomains, and saved the results into a text file for further reconnaissance. SGPTAEI, another prompt to perform passive subdomain enumeration on voneweb.com. It used subfinder and asset finder, combined and deduplicated the results, and saved them into a single file. Different tools produce different results. Some find more subdomains, some find fewer but SubFinder usually discovers the most. As a result, SGPT shows that SubFinder collected subdomains for vonweb.com from multiple passive sources, then AssetFinder discovered additional subdomains that SubFinder might miss. Both outputs are merged, duplicates are removed, and all subdomains are saved into a clean output file for easy use in the next reconnaissance phase. I used the same prompt in Gemini CLI, but at the beginning I added run shell command. Even though Gemini CLI uses that phrase to execute commands, using it in the prompt allows it to display the scan results. Otherwise, Gemini treats it as normal chat text and only provides manual commands instead of showing actual scan output. In this prompt, you instruct Gemini to perform passive subdomain enumeration on the domain volinweb.com. Gemini. CLI generates and executes commands based on your prompt. To execute them, you need to press 1 each time to allow execution. If you press 2, permission is granted once, and Gemini will run the commands automatically until the final output is generated. As a result, the AI shows that in the first step, SubFinder is used to collect subdomains from multiple passive sources such as certificate transparency logs, search-based sources, and public datasets. In the second step, AssetFinder is used to discover additional subdomains related to the same domain that may not appear in the first tool's results. The main outcome of this AI prompt is that Gemini CLI typically displays a shell command sequence where the outputs of SubFinder and AssetFinder are combined, duplicates are removed using tools like sort-u, and finally a single clean output file is created for further reconnaissance and analysis. When Gemini CLI creates and saves a file, it is stored in the Gemini CLI working directory. Sometimes the tool may fail to create the file properly. For this reason, it's better to manually copy the subdomain results and save them into a text file so they can be easily 
reused for analysis with Gemini CLI later. In this SGPT prompt, I instructed the AI to perform ethical reconnaissance on the legal testing domain voneweb.com. The AI generates clean, valid Kali Linux commands, each on a separate line, to enumerate subdomains using subfinder, check takeover risks with subz, scan using nuclei takeover templates, verify findings with subjack, it also clearly mentions that subdomain takeover results can include false positives and must be manually validated without providing any exploitation steps. When this prompt is executed, SGPT thinks with a footprinting mindset and typically outputs five things. First, it shows a command using subfinder to collect subdomains for voneweb.com from passive sources and save them to subfinder.txt. In the second line, it provides a separate command using subz to analyze that subfinder.tx file for potential subdomain takeover risks. In the third step, as GPT displays a valid nuclei command that scans the same subdomain list using takeover tag templates. In the fourth step, it generates a subject command that performs secondary verification using default fingerprints, cross-checking any suspicious findings reported by subz or nuclei. Subdomain takeover scan results may contain false positives, and they must not be considered final without manual validation. The purpose of this SGPT prompt is to demonstrate a complete, beginner-friendly, and legal reconnaissance pipeline showing which tool is used at each stage. Where the output is saved, automated subdomain takeover results are not always 100% accurate. I pasted the same prompt into Gemini CLI. In this stage, we are working in the ethical footprinting phase. Our target is voneweb.com, which is a legal testing domain used strictly for learning purposes. First, we use subfinder. This command collects subdomains from multiple passive sources and saves all results into a file named subfinder.txt. At this stage, no attacks are performed. We are only gathering publicly available information. Next, we use subz. Subz analyzes each subdomain listed in subfinder.txt to check for potential subdomain takeover risks. It only identifies possible risks and does not perform any exploitation. In the third step, we scan the same subdomain list using nuclei. Here we use only the takeover tag, so nuclei runs templates related strictly to subdomain takeover. This helps with automated verification. After that, we perform secondary verification using subject. Subject analyzes error patterns using default fingerprints to determine whether any subdomain is pointing to an unclaimed third-party service. Finally, it's very important to remember, subdomain takeover scan results can include false positives. Manual validation is mandatory for any finding, and no exploitation or claiming should ever be done without proper permission. This entire process is designed for learning, understanding ethical reconnaissance, and demonstrating how to work responsibly in real-world bug bounty and security testing. I hope that after learning these topics, you now have a clear and accurate understanding of this subject. In the next video, we'll explore automated vulnerability scanning with AI. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and leave a comment. Subscribe and stay with us to watch the upcoming episodes. Thanks for watching.